for bloom. <laughs> Australian sense of humour is to understate things immensely. It is incredible that Australian culture permits the ability to make such gross understatements and still maintain some level of legitimacy. People think that anarchists threaten the legitimacy of countries and authority, but in reality, anarchists are the exact opposite. There are no people more serious about authority and the state than those people. They die out of their belief that they are true and exist. It is Australian culture that is the true threat to all ideas of empire and control. How can the state enforce the law in a nation of people that would look at the moon crashing down on Earth and in their last words say, Oh, that doesn't look too good. There is nothing more damaging to a structured society than Australian humour. Some of the funniest books I have ever read were about prisoners of war on the Thai Burma Railway. These are people that suffered some of the most brutal treatment humanly possible, that which was delivered by the Imperial Japanese. Upon facing death, almost every Australian used their final breath by making coarse and obscene jokes and bawdy humour. When people from the USS Houston were facing death, as their ships sank, surrounded by fleets of Japanese Navy in the Java Sea, they prayed to God and said their goodbyes cried and did all the expected things one might do facing death's door. When the HMAs Perth sank in the same place and faced the same fleet, the Australians jumped ship and expressed their panic and senses of impending tomb by taking the piss out of their own lives. Here is another more modern example from a book by our former PM Kevin Rudd. When he and some other Queensland politicians visited China, and accidentally bore witness to the 1989 Tiananmen Square protests. Wayne broke the silence by observing dryly that he had heard the Chinese were very welcoming of foreign guests, and I have plainly gone out of my way to organise a welcome of this order of magnitude for a visiting Queensland delegation to the Chinese capital. One of history's largest and infamous protests was joked about as a welcoming party for what was at the time a backwater state from a small and barely modernised country. Ah! I've decapitated my arm! It's fine, just rub some aloe vera on it. This observation isn't a new thing. Foreigners find this aspect of Australia is incredibly unusual. Our form of humour in this line I hear is actually quite hard for most people to identify. Stop being an arse. Sorry, I don't know that. especially Americans. The CIA says Australia and America share very similar cultures. They also say that they did not coup the Gough Whitlam government, so, you know, they, they aren't exactly the most honest group of people out there. You take the English and Anglo away, and in reality, we are both stuck in our cultural styles. Where Americans glorify and diify success, every fiber of the Australian spirit is built towards belittling all forms of popularity. Part of that comes from a Scottish tendency to back the underdog, but a lot seems to be an Australian exclusive. What do Australians instead glorify? A f***ing stale slice of white bread with a partially burnt sausage and specifically Heinz tomato sauce. You can tell Australians glorify it because of the very fact that I dare not refer to it as the best possible object on earth, the crystal skull of our nation. Our Australian ingots that fuel the Commonwealth to power will result in at least 90% of the comments below being strongly worded abuse and objection to my very existence, if not my nationhood. And that's putting into account that most of my audience are not even Australian. You could be the Crocodile Dundee, holding a jar of Vegemite and three boomerangs. And if you say that a bunning snag is not technically the best thing on earth, the Australian military would release five tactical eshes to stab him in the abdomen on the Fremantle line in Perth. You foreigners may make fun of Australia with your various and many arguments, by which I mean constant and uninformed reference to the Emu War, but you people would have to appreciate the very fact that Australia exists as a political entity at all is a testament to our strength. 
I attribute our political stability to the labour movement which represented Australia's other great culture worship, the ability to do as little work as f***ing possible. You can see these two great political fights between the glorification of mildly sh people and the immense desire to make life as easy going as possible in the Liberal and Labour Party respectively. This is the structure of the Australian nation. The Commonwealth is sustained through these two persisting ideas. The worship of mildly shit things and the ability to do as little work as humanly possible. Yeah. By our former PM, Kevin Rudd. <coughs>